Okay, so today in Cinema 4D, we are going to talk about something called generators. And generators are another way of creating geometry inside of Cinema 4D to create certain things. We talked about working with primitives like cubes and spheres and creating things that way. But now we're going to talk about a different way of creating things or building things, etc. So if you want to go to um, create, you can find an area here called generators. And there's a whole bunch of generators. We're not actually going to work through all these generators, but we're going to look through um, these four right here, spline to mesh. And we're going to talk about those as an idea. You can also get those by going over here. And inside here, you'll see these four generators, extrude, lathe, loft, and sweep. And we can talk about those. And if we have time, maybe we'll talk about some of these other ones and some of them, what they'll do. If not, we'll talk about them in another lesson. So we're going to start here with extrude, lathe, loft, and sweep. And if so if you grab, say, extrude, for example, you grab extrude, and it does nothing. It puts a dot right here in the center of the screen that basically has no coordinates or no real controls whatsoever. It has coordinates, but it has no real controls whatsoever. And if you hit Command-R, you'll see it makes nothing. And so it creates nothing there. And so we have the extrude. We have that as an existence. And it has some controls and attributes. It has some things we can adjust and some controls we can do. We can move its position, etc. We can change what it looks like and change some things about it and basically decide what it is. But ultimately, it's just a dot. It's a dot in the screen um, that just exists at the zero point, the center of the screen, by default. So let's start to play a little bit. Let's see what we can do with this here. Well, as you can see here under the Create menu, you'll see Generators. And these generators are considered what are called Spline to Mesh Generators. So making a, taking a spline and making a mesh. Well, the question is, is what's a spline? We haven't talked about splines yet. So let's talk about splines. So let's delete this extrude and let's go in here. And let's set up this and say, in here, we have these different splines. And for example, we have the rectangle. But if we hold this down, we can go to Rectangle. We can go to Circle, End Side, Helix, Four Side, Sisold, Cogwheel, Cycloid, Flower, Profile, Star, Formula, Empty Spline, etc., and even Arc. And you have all these splines. But let's start simple. Let's just start with the rectangle, and we'll make a rectangle. And so this made a rectangle. And you can see this little two-dimensional rectangle here. And the rectangle has coordinates, obviously. It has some basic controls, as all different objects do. But it also has, under the object controls, some different controls. And it's a square by default. It's 400 centimeters by 400 centimeters. But we can make this lower in height and make this, say, 200 by 400, maybe. And we can change uh, a little bit of the controls here. You'll see now that it's 200 by 400, but it's actually going through the middle of the floor here. So it's actually drifting through the floor. So we can raise this up, say, 100. Again, in position, we can go 100 up on the Y. So it's up on top of this. So now it's on top of the floor. If we were to make a floor, say, for example, we were to make a, a plane, the plane would be on the floor. This is over top of the floor. So we have this object here, this rectangle. There's some other object controls we can do here. We can change and add some rounding to this. So we can go here to go rounding, and we can add a radius of our rounding here. Change this to be kind of like a, a pillbox, I guess. Um, and so we have some controls there of how this is shaped and how this is controlled. We'll make this 75 for now and have this like so. But again, when we hit, let me just get rid of the plane here because we don't really need it. But when we go here and we hit Command-R, this doesn't do anything. I get a black screen, nothing there, nothing to see, no, sorry, nothing. Uh, this rectangle here and this is what's called the spline shape, this spline shape basically doesn't have really any attributes to it. It doesn't have any geometry to it. It doesn't, it doesn't create anything. It creates basically a piece of math. This is just a piece of math. This is somebody figured out the math to create this shape, you know, the trigonometry to figure out this shape. And they basically drew this shape. But when it comes down to it, this doesn't have any, any you know, physicality to it. And so what we have to do is we have to set up this relationship between the rectangle and create generator spline to mesh. We need to take the spline and make it to a mesh with one of these controls, extrude, lathe, loft, or sweep. I'm going to do something just for fun. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to just say, I'm going to open it up here. And at the top bar of this, at the very top bar of this little breakout window that opens, you can grab this top bar, and you can have this kind of a floating window. So you now have a, a floating window that kind of floats there. So again, I can go right here and just grab this, and you'll see there's a little dotted bar up here. If I, if I highlight the dotted bar, I can grab this and have this as a floating window, and it just kind of floats there. And you'll see all this 
like so. Now what I could further do is I could grab this top bar up here and I could pull this and grab this and throw this up here and make another row of tools. Now I have another row of tools up here that I can see. Just in case you ever want to do that, I just want to show you you can re kind of redesign your entire workspace and have that there. I don't really like this, so I'm going to go to the edge here and I'm going to right click and say um, sh uh, show icon, show text, etc. We can change there. We can change the number of rows and columns. Right now there's two rows, um, but we're going to change this to one row. Uh, so now they're reading across, and we'll go here and we'll right click on this edge, sorry. Click on this edge here and right click, and we're gonna go icon size and go to medium or maybe large. Large, okay, there we have all the, all the, all the generators up there. So these are all the generators. Again, we're only gonna talk about these ones, extrude, lathe, loft, and sweep. Well, let's take the extrude lathe and throw it down there. So now we have the extrude and we have the rectangle. So here in the objects, we have the extrude and the rectangle. Now, if we talked about deformers, I rem might remember that we took an uh, take the extrude, for example, and put it underneath the rectangle and make it a child of the rectangle. And we drag it down and makes a child of the rectangle. It looks like this, this rectangle with a child of the extrude. But guess what? That doesn't do anything for us either. Sorry. In this case, the green guys, these little greenies here, these green guys are always parents. We Think of it this way. Think of the extrude as this thing that's this kind of engine. It's kind of this little, you know, control that turns things into there. So we need to feed it some math. We need to, we need to feed it into it. This is a generator. So this is, we're going to feed this rectangle into this generator. When we feed this rectangle into this generator, we feed it in like so, and it creates, boom. Oh, look at that. Now we have some geometry there. Holding down the three key, move around, holding down the one key to kind of see what I'm looking at there. Okay, cool. So now I have this here. So let's look at the extrude controls here. So we still have the rectangle controls really quickly. We still have the rectangle controls. We can still change the rounding to this and adjust the rounding. We could still change the size of this, whatever it may be, uh, and move this however we wanted to. And this would be how the rectangle works, etc. I'm going to move this back to 400 by 200. And I'm going to change the uh, this back to 75. And so, cool, we still have that there. But let's look at the extrude controls. So the extrude controls say they have basic coordinates, basic and coordinates, but they also have object controls. So the object control says, hey, what direction is this extruding? Um, this is extruding in the direction of auto. I don't really love auto. Auto's okay, but I sometimes like to be more control. So if I look at this, if I turn the extrude off and look at just the rectangle, here's just the rectangle. I want to extrude out from the rectangle off the Z axis. So I'm going to extrude towards the Z axis. So in the extrude, I'm going to say, let's extrude out the Z axis and extrude out that way. And that's going to do the same thing. We could also extrude out the Y axis, which would extrude upward, which doesn't make any sense, or extrude off the X axis. Which doesn't extrude, on, which extrudes out that way, which doesn't make any sense either. So in this case, we want to extrude off the Z. Now, it was smart enough that it was figuring out to extrude off auto. Yeah, probably off of auto would be off of the X axis. But sometimes it gets a little bit weird. Um, we're going to talk about it here extruding off the Z axis to be sure. Now it says how far is it offsetting? Well, right now it's offsetting 100 centimeters. So this is going 100 centimeters back. We can change the length of how much it extrudes, make it longer, make it shorter make it more thinner. There, we're just going to make this like 50 here and just have this be a little thin little um, extrusion there, like so. It asks about the subdivisions and the isoparm subdivisions. We can look at subdivisions here and say uh, and B to show um, this, the segments here. So the segments here, it's basically just one subdivision here. We could make the extrusion more subdivisions if we want to get into that. Um, and so we can extrude out this way a little bit there and have it there. These are the things about isoparm subdivisions or flip normals or hierarchical. We can talk about these later when we get into modeling, but for now, we can have this just be more subdivisions like so, and that would be the rectangle extruded out off of that axis. Now, theoretically, we could go here to the extrude and we could say, let's take extrude and let's take a circle, for example. We could take a circle and the circle. Now, the circle, again, has a size to it. We can have a radius of the circle. We can change this to a ring, so there's an inner circle and an outer circle. There we go, an inner circle and outer circle. Um, we can even change the plane that this is on. We could have done this with a rectangle too, but I wanted to show you. Right now it's on the XY plane, so if I one drag up and three drag over, you'll see it's on the XY plane. We can change this to the XZ plane, and now it's flat on the floor like this, and so we have this kind of flat here in the floor, visible there. Again, if we go to the extrude, extrude here, and grab the extrude and put the circle in the extrude, it's going to extrude auto. And by auto, it automatically assumes that it's going to extrude 
downward. And that's not necessarily what I wanted to do. I wanted to extrude upward. And this is the case where auto isn't doing what I want to do. I wanted to extrude upward on the Y. So let's go upward, positive on the Y, and then extrude up that way. If I wanted to go negative on the Y, I could go negative 100, and then go backwards, and it would go down instead. But now I know at least which direction it's going for sure. We're going to go 100 on the Y, and then have the controls like there. So um, this is the case where I have this kind of extruded out this way, etc. Let's look at some more options for the extrude and some things we can do with extrude. Again, we could add more subdivisions here and have more there. We also have some controls for the caps. Let's look at the caps here. So does it have a cap where it starts down here? And does it have a cap where it ends up here? So we can turn off the start cap and have it be empty right here. So now it's just an empty kind of nothing there. We could have an end cap and say, hey, does it not have an end cap? And it's just open like there. Again, we could still go back to the circle and say, hey, let's not go to a ring. Let's get rid of the ring segments of this. Now it's just a open hole. We could change this to an ellipse and change the shape of this to be, you know, more oval or more whatever it may be. There's a little kiddie pool, you know, something like that. We have those controls there. But let's go back to the extrude and let's look at the caps. And we can say the caps, uh, we can open up and have an end cap there and have this like there. Now right now the circle right now has some, has some kind of edginess there around the side. So we're going to go to the circle here and let's look at some of the other controls of the circle. Right now the intermediate points are set to uniform, um, which means um, the points on the circle have uniform points. Now you can't really see these points, but they have um, basically a, a uniform number of points there. We can change this to different types of points. We can change this to natural. It's a little less, you know, edgy there. Um, we could change this to the number of points and increase this to more points. So we could go up to 16 or something, and now you see this is a lot more rounded there. So there's a difference between uh, adaptive points, subdivided points. We'll show these a little bit later about how these look and what these do. Um, obviously, no points doesn't do anything for us, but let's go back to uniform, and we'll just change this to 32 or something and just change the number of points there. So we have a little bit less there, and so now our extrude looks like there. If we go back to our extrude here, um, we have a bevel, so we can bevel this as well. So we can say the size of this bevel, we can bevel this here. And you see that the um, segments is three segments here, so it's one, two, three segments of bevel, and now we have this three side bevel there. We can change this to more if we want to get you know, a, a, a nicer curve maybe. Um, change it to six or something there. We can go from round, so round is the typical bevel shape. We also have a solid bevel, which um, does just a, just a weird edge bevel, which is kind of pointless, but there's some things we can do with it there. Uh, we have a step bevel, and you can create your own steps, so now it has little, little stair steps going up. There we go, and you have a number of steps, so you can create this by less or more steps here. We can have more steps there. Um, and then lastly, we have a curve bevel, and the curve bevel does a straight line up here. But guess what? You can click in here, and you can actually create your own kind of curve. So if you want to have some kind of a weird shaped bevel, we're going to add more segments here just so we have some real jumps. So now you have a weird bevel that looks like there. So now we can bevel it in that shape. We can even go to this curve and say, let's hold on the command key, and let's click and add more Bezier points. If you remember Bezier points from After Effects or some other program that you've used, Bezier, Photoshop, or Illustrator, um, you can create your own kind of weird shapes in there. I don't know what we're really doing here, but you know, some weird geometry of how this looks. And now we have to create this own unique, bizarre shape of there. So depending on the number of segments, we get more roundedness in there and have more edging, um, and so we can create our own shapes there. But let's go simple. We'll go to good old-fashioned round, and then we have the round shape there, the round bevel. Easy, straightforward. Maybe we don't need as many sides there. Um, we have some ideas like there. Um, there's some presets in here that you can load in. You can get some weird, unique shapes that are made by somebody else. Um, so you can load in a preset bevel of some kind of a weird idea. Shifted, what does this say? Shifted bevel something or other. Yeah, shifted bevel, ridge, uh, half circle, mm. load that in there. Oh, and look at that. We got a look at that shape in there. Ooh, crazy. So that's a little bit of a little bit of a ridge there. Hard to see, but you can sort of see this command R. A little bit of a ridge edge there. Mm, look at that. Oh, look at that. They did that with there. So again, some of your own shapes you can make, or we go back to again maybe not 30 sides. We'll go back to six or something. There we go. A little rounded edge there. We're gonna go here and take a look at this. 
Um, and so those controls, you also have controls for separate bevel for the top and the bottom. So start bevel and end bevel, you could change separate bevels for each side um, where this is. And you have some of those controls. There's some other controls you can look at there about how it caps and how the caps are made um, and how it's kind of divided, etc. cetera. Um, you could also change the number of uh, sides of the caps um, and the segments of the caps, et cetera, and get some controls inside of there. Um, so there is some kind of more advanced controls you can get to. Um, do quadrangles, um, so you can set those, um, or regular grid, and you can get some actual shapes there, um, and get some sides to the number of sides there, etc. So there's different shapes that you can get for there, and this will be for building geometry later or for doing some real modeling later. There's some controls you get to. We'll talk about selections at some other time, about some controls you have some selections, um, and this how this really works. Um, we can talk about this when we talk about materials and working with materials, etc. Um, but just as something to keep an eye on, and we can look at it there. Okay, so that is the extrude. Let's do to extrude some more shapes here. So we'll go to circle here, and we'll go here to uh, something else. Um, we'll go to the say the the flower. Oh, the flower. Let's take the flower. We'll go flower, and we'll put this uh, into the extrude again. Make this a child. Make sure the arrow is pointing down here. So the arrow is pointing down. We'll put this into extrude, and now we have the flower. Except this is the extrude is now extruding only on the wrong axis, the y axis. Let's extrude this on the z axis, and now we have. Oh, the flower. Let's hit the uh, H key to kind of move this geometry back a little bit. We'll go back here and just take a look. So this is the flower. The flower itself has a number of petals. We can have more or less petals. You can change the inner radius to be smaller or bigger. Some controls in there. You can change the outer radius to be bigger or smaller. Um, so you can change a flower there like so. One of my favorites, uh, well, let's keep going. Let's just take a look. I'll save my favorite for last. Uh, we have the end side, which can be a number of sides. Right now it's a hexagon, so we can put a hexagon in the extrude. Have a number of sides of hexagon. We can make this bigger or smaller, number of sides, up until, you know, a whole mess of sides, which would be kind of a circle. But, you know, we can make this a, you know, five-sided pentagon there and have this there like so. And we extrude that at there. There's some rounding we could put on the pentagon as well. And so we have this as an idea there. Let's keep going. Let's take a look at what else we got. We have some other things. The four-sided diamond there. The star. We could put a star in here. Again, the star has a number of sides. It has a num the, the points and uh, you can actually twist it as well. Have some twistiness there to the star. Has an outer radius and inner radius, number of points, etc. Uh, you know, some things you can do, some tricks you can do there. Uh, my favorite, of course, is the cogwheel. I do love the cogwheel. And here's why I love the cogwheel. Honestly, I love the cogwheel because I don't understand it. Um, I really don't. I don't. I'm not smart enough to understand how the cogwheel works. Um, so here's the cogwheel. Um, the cogwheel, you can make bigger or smaller. So I'm going to hit the T key and make this smaller and make this smaller. But you can also go here and say, in the cogwheel, so click on the cogwheel, you can also grab the number of teeth. And so the number of teeth here um, is, right now the teeth are called involute teeth. You can either go to involute, ratchet, or flat teeth, and I never understood flat teeth because it's just it's just a circle. I mean, why didn't you just use a circle? Anyway, uh, let's go to involute, and under involute there is a, okay, there's an orientation, there's an undercut, there's a root radius, an addendum radius, a pitch radius, a module, a diametral pitch, a, def a addendum, and a pressure angle. I don't know what any of these things are. If I guess, I don't know, maybe if I worked at Home Depot or something, I understood how cogwheels work or something or understood woodworking or something like that, I can understand that there's a root radius which opens up this, that's the root radius, then there's a addendum radius which is this, then there's a pitch radius which opens up both, then there's a module which just opens up the arm length or in the diametral pitch which seems to do the same thing in the reverse order, I don't, and the addendum which opens up this which seems like the root radius, right? I don't, I, I don't know, pressure angle that makes them thinner or fatter or changes the angle of how this thing works. Man, this is some this is some detail right there. Um, again, you can change this cogwheel to however you want the cogwheel to look, um, make whatever kind of cogwheel you want. Again, decrease number of teeth. Decrease number of teeth actually makes it smaller, um, so you may want to make this bigger overall. Um, but then you have these different teeth there, etc. There's a center hole, so if you go into the inlay, you can click on the inlay and see whether or not you want the center hole or not. And then you actually have an inlay type, so you can have a, a spokes. Well, let's make this a little bit bigger, hold on. Let's go to, let's go to the uh, outer radius and make this a little bit smaller. So then you have some spokes. 
inner radius and outer radius of spokes. You can have some um, holes, little holes, again, make the radius a little bit smaller and make the uh, ring radius a little bit smaller. So you have holes in the center there. You can go to arches. And it keeps being so big. I should just make the whole thing smaller. There's arches there. We'll have the inner radius be like that. So you have some arches there. Change the number of arches. You can make more or less arches there inside. And then, of course, waves. Sorry, waves, waves, thank you, waves. And again, waves would be huge. So let's go to the outer radius and make this smaller inside of here. So you can have waves inside of here. There's a, where some waves, look at that. All this kind of craziness you can do. I just like the cogwheel because it's so confusing and there's so many questions, so many ideas, the frequency of the waves, the amplitude of the waves. Interesting, so a little bit of waviness there. The phase, oh, crazy. Man, you can change a whole bunch of things in here. And again, whether you want a center hole or not is up to you. Um, there, and you have a radius of the center hole, how big the center hole is. Um, some controls there, and a the cutout. Whether you want this to have a, you know, a cutout piece, like it's actually a cogwheel, or some kind of a, actual kind of a blade or something like that. Um, you know, a, a rotary blade or something like that. You have a whole bunch of controls there of things you can do. Anyway, this is just, this is just the extrude. We haven't even gotten to the other ones yet. So this is just things we can do with the extrude. We have all these shapes here like so. Now you will run into some weird shapes, like for example, the uh, sisled or the cycloid, the cycloid. We'll throw the cycloid in here and extrude this out and it makes kind of this, which it doesn't complete. This spline isn't a closed spline, so it doesn't finish this off. So it just makes it kind of like there which is kind of weird. But if you want weird shapes, you want unique shapes there, you can do unique shapes however you want to and make all kinds of shapes with just extrude. So if there's something you just want to extrude, you can go here and just use extrude and have the extrude. And by the way, while we're playing, a couple things about this. So we can go to these random shapes here and there's different shapes we can do. There's even a formula shape where you can type in your own weird formula to make your own formula shape if you understand trigonometry. But God knows I don't, so. I'm not going to mess with trigonometry ever again. Uh, and so here, remember you took this in high school and we're like, man, I should pay attention to trigonometry. I'm never going to use this again. You could type in your own trigonometric formula in here. Whew, exciting. Make your own weird shape. Um, but here, um, a couple things, a couple options that you also have is you also can have inside of here, if you go to text, there is a text spline. And so a text spline will allow you to write text and it has text controls. So you can write something great like uh, uh, trigonometry. Trigonometry. You can barely even spell trigonometry. And now it says trigonometry here. We can take our trigonometry here and say E key, move this over, trigonometry. And now we can go here into the extrude and we can extrude trigonometry. Oh man, trigonometry. And then we can put, you know, into the extrude. We can put caps on the trigonometry. We can say, let's add some bevel controls and have this be a little bit beveled. Maybe some more segments for our bevel there and have really, whoo, look at that. Trigonometry, amazing. Looks good, looks good, that's cool. And then you can go maybe into the material manager and say, hey, in the material managers, we can go in here and say materials. Let's grab a wood material. Let's grab a, a good old wood based material. We'll grab some basic, um, I don't know, some, some, some spruce planks maybe? Or maybe we want to wood. Let's go to some kind of concrete or something, some kind of stone. Some kind of really tough looking stone here. We'll go to alabaster. Yeah, alabaster sounds good. Or maybe granite. Yeah, granite. Let's do granite. We can put this in the extrude and then boom, this will download this and then look really tough there. Oh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. Look at that stone. This can take a little bit longer to render, but whoo, look at that there. So you have those kind of coordinates and those kind of controls, et cetera, inside of there. Again, really good looking stone, et cetera. Awesome, 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 like so. Whoo, look at that. My computer's starting to warm up there. That looks really tough, really tough trigonometry. It's like a really heavy duty trigonometry textbook. Take some time to render. That uh, that that uh, that uh stone there is really doing the work. Really doing the work. Man, that looks good. Man, that looks good. That looks really good. I like it. 
Cool. Amazing. Yeah, cool. Excellent. We'll get rid of that because we don't really need it. But that's some things you can do with Extrude. Um, so we have Extrude. Okay, so let's move on. We're, we're spending a lot of time talking about Extrude. I know. We had all these other shapes here. We have Extrude. We have Lathe. We have Loft. We have Sweep. And so we have Extrude, Lathe, Loft, and Sweep. Let's go here and let's, for example, let's look at Lathe. And so we'll look at Lathe and we'll apply Lathe here and we'll see what we can do with Lathe. Okay, so here's how Lathe works. Lathe says if we take a shape, let's take, for example, let's take a, uh, let's just take a, a arc here and we'll take this arc here like so okay this arc the lathe here is at the zero position here and the lathe here is set here and it's going to lathe we'll go to the object controls and it's going to lathe around the y-axis so it's going to lathe here around the y-axis now the arc is going to say if we took this and for example if we took right from here right from where the lathe is and we said if we just rotated and spun around like this woo, spun around a thousand times just kept spinning around, really spinning around once. If we spun around this once and just kind of let this arc right here, if we just said, let's just take this and have this spin around like this, a whole, like a whole bunch of times, what kind of shape would this make? What kind of shape, if we just spun around really fast, what kind of shape would this make? As it spun around this Y axis of where this is, what kind of shape would it make? Well, ultimately, let's go back to the arc and let's just, Reset the arc's coordinates back to something normal. Zero. Cool. So what kind of shape would this make? View, frame default. What kind of shape would it make? Well, with this arc here, like this, we could say put the arc in here in the lathe. It's going to sweep around and make this dome shape because it wrapped around, it lathed around this dome here, and it made this dome shape with an open end here like so. And so it made this dome shape. Now the arc itself has some coordinates. Obviously it has some object controls. We can change the radius of this, make this bigger or smaller. We can go here and change the start angle and the end angle and say, hey, move to here, move to there. Well, if, we, if we extended it to like this, to 90 to negative 90, again, what would it make? It would make a circle. It would make a, it would make a sphere. And so you have it there. If we made it just, you know, from here to here, well, guess what? It would make this shape. Yeah. Little weird hat, you know, they're like so. So we can change this to whatever we want to and have this there. Now that's just the arc. Alone, the arc would do that there. So let's go to the lathe here and let's say, let's grab a different shape. Let's say if we grabbed, say, the, the sisled here and the sisled here, we put this. If this spun around a whole bunch of times, what kind of shape would it make going into the lathe? Well, we can go into the lathe and say, boom, okay, it made that shape. Look at that. That's kooky. Can the sisal do other things here? It has a width. It has an amount of tension. We can change the amount of tension. Oh, that's cool. We can do some things like there. It's this size tippled versus a lemniscate versus a stophoid. Strophoid. That's the st oh, that's the strophoid. Let's take a look at that without the things. That's the strophoid. The lemniscate looks ooh. Infinity. Oh, well, it makes that. I mean, I guess that's what happens when this rotates and spins around. It makes this shape. Fascinating. Weird. It probably inverts right in the center. Look at that. It inverts right in the center. Crazy. Craziness. Anyway, we have that. So the lathe will do that, and we can do that with those kind of shapes and make all kinds of shapes. So we could go, we could go kooky and say, let's go here and say, we'll take the star the multi-pointed star here. We'll take the multi-pointed star here and we'll put the multi-pointed star into the lathe. What happens when this lathe? It makes that. Man, that's crazy. Who wants that? I mean, maybe. Maybe you want that. Maybe you want that as an idea. Notice the lathe has some controls um, under the object controls of the subdivisions. And the subdivisions here, you can see that this is making so many subdivisions, it's making 32. We might want to go bigger and go to 48 or something and have more subdivisions. That way it looks roundier on the edges there, etc. Um, we can have some controls there, like so, and have those inside of there. Um, there's some other controls in the lathe, whether or not it makes caps or not. So if you had something where you had like a, a shape here, uh, let's get rid of the star. We'll go back to say um, some other size, some other shape, etc. I don't know. Uh, let's go back to the arc here and say the arc, and we'll put that in the lathe. Um, cool. We can have um, whether well, it does have a cap in this case, but it doesn't. It has an open ended here because it's not enclosed. But there will be some controls where we'll have some how it bevels, 
um, whether it has whether it bevels or not, and how it how it bevels, etc., um, depending on the shape, um, whether it's a closed shape or not. Again, we can put the rectangle in here maybe, and have this be like so, and rectangle, etc. And we can have the rectangular shape there, and we can also say under the lathe, get rid of the start cap or end cap, um, and have change some of there. Um, so you will have some controls to bevel this, etc. Um, it's in, in there in the lathe. Um, we can show it to you later, but um, some ideas in terms of how this works with the lathe. So let me go back to view frame default because I do like to be in my default location. Um, so that is the lathe and the lathe has some controls. But let's talk about, we want to make some unique shapes. We want to start to go outside the, the realm of these default splines, these generic kind of basic splines that exist. Um, they have some interesting splines. I don't know if I really want these splines. I want something more, more complex, more involved. And so in order to do that, we are going to use this tool right here, which is the, the spline pen tool. And the spline pen tool will allow us to draw our own spline. So let's click on the spline pen tool. And the spline pen tool will allow us to click random places and make our own splines. And now we can draw and make our own shaped splines like so. And here's the thing, if we go further, you might notice that we can go here, and I'm un going to undo. We can click and click, and then we can click and drag and make curved edges. This is just like After Effects for drawing masks. Um, we're going to draw our own splines. So we can curve and draw our own splines like there. But here's the thing. You don't want to do this. Now, why did you show me this if I don't want to do this, Chad? Well, you don't want to do this for a number of reasons. One is, um, I'm going to hit the E key to get out of here. The most important reason is here is if I go to these points here, you'll notice that these points... My spline is curved all crooked. And my spline is curved all crooked because I was drawing in perspective view. Up here, this is perspective view. And we love perspective view because it gets lets us see the full perspective of this. But I don't know the shape I'm drawing this spline in. So this spline, again, if I drew this into the lathe, it might look like this. It would look all kind of weird and kind of crooked as this thing looks. It's really an interesting shape. I kind of like it. But it, man, it's artistic. But it's not the shape that I want. Um, it's not working really well here. So we don't want to draw this in a perspective view because when we draw in a perspective view here and we draw in here with the spline pen, we don't know whether we're pulling back or up or back into space or down or left or right. It doesn't, we're pulling in the 3D space. And so pulling in two directions doesn't help us because it's hard to tell is this, is this, so is pulling this way pulling back or to the right? Is pulling this way up or back. I don't know what I'm doing. And so it's hard to tell, you know, which way I'm drawing. And so drawing using the spline pen inside of here is not probably your best friend. So let's talk about this. Up here in the corner, you will see a little button that will put us into some of the other views. And so we can go in here and we can also go into cameras and see the other views. There's different other views here, but we want to leave this view alone. We want to leave perspective view alone. We want to hit this little button up here and this little button up here will show us the quad screen orthographic views. So now we have perspective view, we have top view, we have right view, and we have front view. And we can go to any of these views. If we want to take right view and click on it, there's a little camera control here. So there's a camera control for each of these. Before, when we were like this and only showed perspective, we only had these little panels here, these little menus here. Here now we have these little menus, and now we can go to this one and say, you know what, we want this one to be left. And so now we have perspective, top, left and front. Well, I want to go to front and I'm going to bring up front and I'm going to uh, enlarge front. So I'm going to click on the toggle, the active view, and now it's going to be front here. Now, coincidentally, I have the one key, which will allow me to move back and forth and up and down. I have the two key, which will allow me to zoom in and zoom out, but I probably don't want to hold on the three key because the three key will only rotate me horizontally. It will not give me any rotate in 3D space because this Control shift z to undo that, um, is not a 3D view. This only gives me a 2D view. So this forces me to be 2D, which is kind of, you know, kind of cool. So now let's go to my pen tool. Let's go to my spline pen and say, okay, here, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to make this and this, and we're going to click here, click to this edge here, and click to this edge there. And now I've made this shape. And so now I'm going to hit the E key. To get out of the spline pen, I want to go to a different tool. So I want to go to another tool here like the E key. And now I have the spline pen here. And now I'm here like so. Now if I go back to the orthographic view, now I show that it looks 
this is still a 2D shape. And it was made as a 2D shape because it's a simple 2D shape. And I made it in these orthographic views. These 2D views are called orthographic views. I'm gonna take the spline pen, put it in the orthographic, put it into the lathe, and now here, boom, I've made some kind of a, a gumdrop balloon there like so, and I have this shape inside of here, and I have this gumdrop looking balloon here, etc., like so. If I wanted to, I could go back to the orthographic view to the front view here, and it shows me in, in kind of a limited um, display here that what it looks like. I could go back, turn the lathe off for a second, I'll look back at the spline, and I can go back to the pen here, spline pen, and I could pick up and make a little section here and a little section like this and have a little end piece to my, um, you know, little tie off piece to my balloon. Hit the E key again, I'll turn back the lathe back on, now I have kind of this with a little bit of a, a nub at the bottom. Let's go back to the orthographic view or back to the perspective view. And in this perspective view, now I can see that I have my little balloon. I could go and make this balloon, I don't know, some kind of a color here. Let's go into the controls up here and see, let's get like a, like a, is there like a rubber? There's a black rubber, let's go plastic. I know it's not the same thing, but you know, we're just playing here. I just wanna get a color here. We haven't really talked about there. We'll just make plastic green here. Cool, throw this in the balloon and now we have this. And now I have a little green balloon. Command R, there's my little green balloon. Amazing, cool, so I have this little balloon there, like so, etc. Now, as I said before, a couple things I want you to pay attention to and a couple things I want you to consider. If I were to say, for example, let's go back to this orthographic view here and let's look at this, this spline here. So I'm gonna go to the spline here. Right now when I'm in the spline and I'm focusing the spline, it automatically puts me into this mode here called point mode. So when I'm drawing a spline, it takes the liberty of being in point mode. If I were to make an object like a cube here and I had a cube, the cube would normally be in what's called model mode or object mode. And so this model mode allows me to move the cube around. Again, we can look back here in uh, perspective view and see that I have a cube here and I can move the cube in, in this control. And I have these controls to change the cube, make it bigger, make it smaller, make all these adjustments like so, and do all these kind of fixes inside here. That's with the object. But here, with the, with the spline, I have the controls to either be in spline mode, which would move the entire spline, or be in point mode, and point mode will allow me to grab the points, and I can start to adjust and tweak and move the points and make this bigger whatsoever. So if I wanted to move this whole thing, I could go here back to model mode and move this here further away. Now a couple things to be considered of. Uh, first is, if I make it like this, and I have this like here, and this is all the way over here, remember it's wrapping around where the lathe Y position is. So the Y position is where it's wrapping around. So in this case, it's gonna wrap super wide like this and make this shape, which is not necessarily the same shape that I wanted before. I mean, maybe I did. This is kind of like a weird vase or something, um, but this is not the same thing. I wanna make sure in this case that if I wanna make my balloon, I want my spline to be right here hitting perfectly fine on the Y axis. And so now it's hitting perfectly fine there on the Y axis. I can look in orthographic view and look in front view and make sure that these points are hitting right here in the center of the Y axis, right there in the Y axis. Um, I wanna make sure I'm right in this line and that way I know when I make my spline, it's there perfectly fine. Now, a couple other advantages you have. So let's talk about making splines and drawing splines this way. We're gonna get rid of the spline, we're gonna delete the spline, see you later, and we're gonna go to the pen tool. Now with the pen tool, you have some options here. You can, first off, um, go here and say, I can draw a shape here. So I'm gonna draw, a, I'm gonna draw basically the shape of a wine glass here. So I'm gonna click here with my pen tool. So I'm here in my spline pen, and I'm gonna draw here to maybe here to make the base of my my wine glass, I'm gonna draw to here, to there, and I'm gonna draw up like this. And I'm gonna draw to here and make my other part of my wine glass, I'm gonna go to here and make this wine glass here, and I'm gonna come back uh, maybe to here and go right to this edge here like so. Excellent. And so I'm gonna hit the E key to get out of this, and now I'm gonna put this into the lathe. We'll turn the lathe on and we'll put this there. And I made this wine glass like so. And this is an okay wine glass, we'll take a look. Now I'm gonna use my shortcut keys because I'm tired of going to this button here and going back to this button here. So I'm gonna show you my shortcut keys. We'll get rid of the green because the green doesn't really work for us. Um, so now we have the wine glass here. So let's talk about this. I don't know, it's really a wine glass. It looks kind of looks kind of cheap, looks kind of there. Okay, so let's talk about 
manipulating my spline a little bit and some things I can do with my spline. So I'm going to use the F1 key to go to perspective, F2 to go to the next view, which is top view, which is showing the top down, F3 to show the left view, which was the other view that I had, and I'm going to F4 to show you this um, front view. So now I'm here in the front view. I'm back to the front view. Let's talk about my spline here. By default, while I'm using the pen, I can click and drag and make Bezier curves. But if I've made linear points, right here, if you click this point, it's just a straight linear point, or this point, I want it to be a curved point, I'm going to grab this point here, I'm going to click on this point here. Now if I click on this point and I hover over this point and I right click, you'll see that I'll get some weird menu here that asks about my position, my selection, my root, parent, bounds, point, camera free, orientation. I don't like that. And this is the nitpicky thing. This is super nitpicky. So. If I click on this and then I right click perfectly, I'm going to get these controls here. If I click next to it, like over here in the blank space, so I'm clicked on it, but I'm not, I'm not right clicking directly on it. I'm right clicking over here somewhere. You will see there's a control here. And there's a whole bunch of things about asks about how to weld this and the cross section, how to mirror this and cut this and et cetera, and all these controls that we'll get into in some future point. But the one that I like is the hard interpolation versus soft interpolation. Hard interpolation doesn't have any kind of Bezier handles to this. I want to switch this to soft interpolation and have this be with Bezier handles and now I have some curvature. So I have some curvature that I can move like this, etc. And I want this to be straight this way but then I want it to curve outward so it's going to come across straight and then curve over to make kind of a, a little bit of a lip here. So I'm going to grab this and then if I grab this here like this and if I hold on the shift key Hold on, let's see if I can grab this here. And I hold, I gotta hit shift first, so that's the trick. Hit shift first, and by holding the shift key, I can add this, and now I can break this handle and have this be more like this. So this one is kind of flat even, and then shift first, grab this. If I, grab, if I hit shift after I've grabbed the handle, it doesn't do what I wanted to do. I need to hit shift first, that was my mistake there. So I have this flat like this, and this is here. So I'll do this again, click here. We're gonna right click, choose soft interpolation. It's gonna make some Bezier. Then I'm gonna shift click this to be a little bit more straighter. And this one, shift, and have a little bit of roundedness there. And I could grab this one, click this one, right click soft interpolation, and maybe pull this in like this and get this kind of shape like so. And now I have a little different shape of my wine glass. I'm gonna hit F1, and now I have this different looking wine glass like there. So I have some controls there that I can adjust. Other things I can do, I can go back to F4, which would be my front view here, turn my spline off here, and I can grab multiple points. I think this is too thick here, so I'm gonna grab this point, shift click this point, and grab both these and push these in here like so, and have this be thinner. We can now hit F1, turn my lathe back on, and see that's what my wine glass looks like now. But here's the truth. I honestly kind of want my wine glass to look like a wine glass. This looks like a martini glass, and I don't even know if this is right or anything. I could do this in here, too. I can go to spline and say if I can find this point, I can grab this point and kind of push this one shorter, have this be shorter like there. I could grab this point and maybe pull this point up more to have this more you know, like that, or, you know, there's different things I can do. I can control in here, but I, I want to be really careful about controlling my spline inside perspective view, because sometimes, I, especially with handles, I don't know if I'm grabbing this when I'm grabbing this and pulling this back or forth or whatever. I want to hit F4 and go into these views. So again, F1, F2, F3, F4 will show me my different views, and then F5 will show me my full quad screen there, so now we can see one, two, three, and four. So whatever these are set to, even if this is set to left or right, whatever it may be. But we're gonna go to F4 here and see this inside of here. So we have the spline set up inside of here like so. But I wanna have a little bit more control, so let's play a game. In this orthographic view, I'm gonna get rid of this spline. We're gonna delete the spline, we're gonna start over here. In here, under um, do, 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 uh, view, there is configure view, which is shift V. And this is what I really like in here. Under configure view, shift V, I'm gonna go to configure view, shift V here. And I'm gonna say, um, there's view options, there's some controls here about how it lines up and how it uses wireframes, etc. The filters, the safe frames you can enable. Um, 
The one I like here is though is back. So this is the viewport option. So Shift V will bring up how this viewport, how this perspective looks, or how this viewport looks. And so we're gonna go to back, and under back it says, hey, would you like to show an image in the background of this shot? So yeah, we're gonna go here and go to this little folder here, select a file, and I'm gonna go here to the file, and on the desktop I have a picture of a wine glass. Amazing. Let's go here to open. And we're going to open up this wine glass and see. Okay, so we have this wine glass. This wine glass is okay. It's kind of not perfect though. So now we have some controls here. I'm going to reset this here. I just was playing before here, but we're going to reset this. The wine glass looks a little bit like this and it looks kind of okay. Let's take this wine glass and let's change um, the size of this to be a little bit bigger. We're going to make this a little bit bigger in size. And we're going to offset the y axis to pull this up screen a little bit so it's up here a little bit more. And now we're just going to have it kind of hitting right here across this edge right here and right here across the bottom. Maybe we'll change the size just a little bit bigger so it fits from this edge to this edge. And we're going to move this over so it's a little bit more. So we're going to offset the x-axis so it's kind of in the center. And it's actually a little bit crooked, so I'm going to change this. I'm going to rotate this, you know, not, not like this, but I'm going to rotate this, honestly, just one degree. So I get rid of my spline there. I just hit undo when I put my spline back. Okay, so now I have this kind of perfectly lined up here and perfectly lined up across the bottom. I could change this again, Shift V, go this back image. So I have some controls here to kind of keep this here. We're gonna make this a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller, and I'm gonna move this down just a little bit on the Y axis, just right there, perfect, excellent. So now I have this lined up. It looks like it's pretty in the center here. It looks like it's falling across the center. I'm gonna change the X offset to just be right right there, in the, right in the center of the stem there. And now we're gonna really play here. So now we have this wine glass here that looks like a wine glass. Now, I can use that to kind of trace. I can use that to kind of say, hey, let's trace this out and let's take my spline pen and say, okay, we're gonna start from the bottom here. We're gonna click here. We'll go to here, we'll kind of just curve a little bit like this. We're gonna curve here a little bit like there. We're gonna click here, we're gonna curve up a little bit like this. Maybe click to here. Curve up a little bit like there. And you can, you know, decide how good of an artist you are to draw out your spline there and have this like there. Cut to there. And now maybe we want to say, let's come back to, uh, we want to come, so we want this to come back in, in this kind of the same position here. And have our wine glass curve out like this. Over here, and we want to come right to this Y position here and right to there. Let's take E key, we'll get out of here. We can actually even go Shift V, go to Shift V and actually change the um, the transparency amount and crank, make this more transparent so we can see our line here and see how this looks. So this is sort of the shape we have. I don't know if it's gonna be great. We're gonna put the spline into the lathe. Excellent, and now we have, whoo. I, I don't know, let's hit F1, let's see how this looks. F1, oh. Oh, look at my wine glass there. Not a bad like I mean it's a little it's a little it needs a little work, but that's not bad. That's bad. That's that's an interesting wine glass there. We could take this there. We could go to materials here and we'll say let's look for for a glass looking material. We'll get a simple glass here. Put the simple glass on this lathe here. Boom. How this look glassy. Now we're not going to be able to barely see it because it's going to be glass. So guess what? It's invisible here. So there's nothing really reflective in the glass here. So we have to put something else behind it. We could go in here really quick. I'll show you a quick trick. We can take it to the light materials and throw in a physical sky behind it. That'll add a physical sky there. So that was in the light controls. We haven't talked about light controls, but we'll add a physical sky in there. And we'll go to here, physical sky, and say, boom. And now we have, oh. It needs work. It needs work. I understand it needs work. It needs work because there's a little ridge here, which maybe is an artistic design, but it has a little ridge there, and that's because the spline, wherever the spline is here, is kind of overlapping in a weird way. Now, a thing you've got to be careful of, one thing you have to be careful of, I do this all the time, and it, this is a mistake I make. I'm going to go back to F4, and I want to show you a mistake I make on a regular basis that kind of drives me crazy. Um, right now, I want to click on this point and move this. Um, 
Normally in After Effects, for example, you would be able to grab this and move it simultaneously. Um, but right now we're on this point. And so just for, for example purposes, if I click on this point here, I'm clicked on this point here, and I can go over here, since I'm on this point and since I'm using the Move tool, I can actually go over here and go and move this point around. So if I try to grab this and then simultaneously move, I'm going to move this point. So if I go like this and I go, let me grab and move, I'm, I'm moving this point. And that's because it doesn't acknowledge that I grabbed this if I'm moving. And that's because over here, I can grab over here, over here, anywhere else I want to and move this point. So grabbing this and moving it doesn't, doesn't move that. I need to be a little bit more patient and click here first, and then I can move this wherever I wanted to and have this move. So it's a thing I do all the time, click this first, and then I can go here and move this and have this curve a little bit better. Click on this, and then I can move this however I wanted to and move this up, whatever I, whatever I needed to do to make this work, you know have the geometry work a little bit better and have this be a little bit more. So you have to click first and then move. Don't try to click and then move automatically. It doesn't work for you in terms of that capacity there. Again, this one was a linear point, so I can right click and do soft interpolation and have this be curved. And I can pull this curve out and have this curve like so, etc. like there. And so I can work on my shape of this and kind of get this shape right. Again, I can shift click and then change the, the individuals. Um, the individual handles and have this be shaped just the way I wanted to and have this be shaped really much nicer. I'm going to take this and pull this a little bit shorter so it's a little bit less of a dimple at the bottom. And I can clean this up a lot and make this whatever kind of curves I want to make. There we go. And have this there. Again, turn the lathe on and then boom, I have the lathe and I have the shape. And I can look at this in this view just really quickly. I could go here to um, display and go to garage shading. Normally it's just lines here, NG, but I could do garage shading and say, oh, this is how this looks. You know, Command R. Boom, this is how it looks. So we're getting closer to a wine glass. We have a kind of a shape there. We can kind of play with that shape a little bit and we can see what needs to be cleaned up and what needs to be worked on. But we can make our own kind of unique shapes with just the lathe. And so that's in there. We have some controls to make that like so. But again, we have that back view, we have some there. I want to keep talking about the spline. I know I want to get to also to the loft and sweep, but that might be a future lesson. But for now, we're going to work, keep working the spline because I think it's really important to really focus on what you can do with the spline and how the spline works. Um, some controls there. So you can obviously tweak the spline by going to the points and then moving back and forth and getting some controls there. You can also, again, switch between soft interpolation and hard interpolation. You can also shift click and grab the handles and make those handles have adjustments there like so. You could also, let's see, um, you can also go and if you're here, if you want to kind of curve this differently, you can go to rotate and you can actually, here, we'll just zoom in very really close so we can see. We can actually rotate and then rotate this so it fits appropriately. So use the tools, you know, use the move tools, use the rotate, use those controls there like so. Um, right now this is um, set to like this, so if I pull up, it's gonna pull up straight up. Like there, cool. And so it's like there, cool, 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 cool. Um, and so I can rotate, I can move, I can adjust, etc. I can grab these points. Again, if I want to move the whole thing, I want to be back into the modeling mode, and then I can move the whole spline shape. So things to consider, things to work on there. Um, really quick, I'm going to go to Command N, and I'm going to make a new window here, or new um, project here. I'm going to go to new project here. I want to talk about some other things with some splines, and we're going to go here to F4 to orthographic views here. Sorry, F4 to orthographic views. Um, so there are, other, there are other spline types, some things to consider about splines. Um, by default, it makes in the spline pen, it decides on Bezier. There's also linear, cubic, Akama, and B spline. Um, and these are different ways of doing um, to drawing curves, basically. Um, linear doesn't draw curves at all. So linear just says, hey, I can drag and pull. It's just going to pull this up or down. It's not going to make any curves. It's not going to draw anything whatsoever. I don't have those options. But did you know that there are other ways of drawing splines? Really, Chad? There are other ways of drawing splines? Yeah. There is cubic, which does curves naturally based on the angle and the number of points you have. So it will create points and just automatically naturally curve this based on cubic trigonometry. Um, and so we have that or something like that. There's some math involved. I don't want to talk about math. 
I know, I don't even understand it, but there's some math involved that just kind of automatically does it for you. Um, there. Um, there is Akima. Honestly, don't know what Akima does. Um, Akima does a different kind of math based on the number of points you have, etc. Looks a lot like cubic, but does it slightly differently. And the more points you make, it actually adjusts the points before and after it um, to make other kinds of shapes there. So you can make other shapes. If you don't like drawing Bezier handles, you know, if you don't, if you're not a fan of Pierre Bezier there, you can make your own shapes using Akima or Akima. I don't even know how to pronounce it. And there's B-spline. And B-spline is a fascinating idea. B-spline actually has points that are outside the tangent. So here, if you have shapes like this, you go here to E. This point here pulls this handle, this one out more. So it's another way of doing the math, basically, of where the point is in relationship to where you're pulling. Um, you have those controls like so to change that in there. So that's another option you have in terms of drawing splines. Um, if you're drawing splines, for example, like say, for example, we want to draw the shape of, say, a skateboard. Uh, and say, we said here, we want to draw like a click here. We're going to click. We're just going to draw a shape across like a, like a, a skateboard um, deck here. And we're going to draw here. And we're going to draw here. And then I'm going to draw up to maybe here. Oh, I'm, see, I'm still in B spline, which I don't want to be. Let's go back to Bezier, because I'm I'm a I'm a good old-fashioned Bezier kind of person. And so here I'm going to draw a click here, and click here, and I'm going to draw to like here maybe, and draw like this, and draw kind of like there, and then I'm going to draw into here. Let's see, that's one, two, and then draw here, and then draw there, and then click and pull to here and close this off. When I close this off, I'm going to close this off like there, um, etc., and have this be completed. Um, now, the trick is, I was kind of drawing freehand, and by, I'm going to hit E key. I was drawing freehand, and by drawing freehand, I don't really know if these are perfectly aligned. I can tell right off the bat that these two are not perfectly aligned. I'll show you a trick that you can do. There's a control over here um, that brings up um, these transform controls. And so you have them, these are, these are kind of global transform controls that you have, these kind of uh, global controls that will adjust your transform controls. Um, and there, I'm just going to bring them up so you can see them a little bit better um, there. If I click on this point, it tells me where this point is in space. And so this point is at 151 by 556 and at 149.5618. So this is where this one is. This one on the x-axis is 249, so it's way over here in the x-axis. And this is at 149 by 063. So this one's at 149 by 5618. This one's at 149 by by 063. So if I put these, let's just be honest, if I put this at 150, I can move this one to 150, and then click this one and put this one at 150 as well. And I can do the math there, and this would move these points exactly, exactly where I want them to be, exactly there. Let's go to these ones and move this one at negative 50, and move this one here at negative 50 as well. See, they were off a little bit, so they weren't exactly the same point. This point here is at 50. This point here is exactly at 50 as well. And so here, this is exactly 50. Now, what I want to do is I also want to make sure that the, this side is, the points on this side are equal distant from the points on this side. So I'm going to click on this one. Oops, sorry. Eeky. This one, and then shift click on this one. And I noticed that the distance of this is 400, 401 across. Okay. Let's move this here, and let's make sure that this is exactly 400 across. And it's at negative 50. So now this is at 400 across, which means 200 this way, 200 that way. And these are exactly 400, negative 50. Let's look at this one and this one. And the distance between this would equal the size. So this is the position, this is the rotation, this is the size. Again, this is 400.327. We're going to make this 400 and the position here exactly at negative 50. And so however I draw this, sometimes I can use the math to kind of make myself, you know, know them exactly fine. If I click on this one and this one, these are 600 across, not 600.74. And again, the center position is exactly at negative 50. And so now I know that this is kind of, you know, symmetrical in terms of shape, in terms of design, in terms of controls there like so. Um, obviously, the curves are not symmetrical, but they are what they are. 
Um, and so we do have some controls to kind of control how this shape looks, how this shape works. Now, the other detail you might want to get into is if I took this and said, hey, I have this grid here. Can I snap to this grid? Is there a way to snap to this grid? Well, there is. So up here, there's a control for snapping. And up here, there's snapping. And it says enable snapping, and we can turn snapping on. But here's the problem with snapping. We don't know where we're snapping to. And that is in the settings here. So next is snapping. Up here, you see snapping. Turn snapping on or off. And you can see there, we can turn snapping on or off. So we can hit, boom, uh, up here, we can hit Shift S to turn snapping on or off. So Shift S will turn snapping on or off. But over here, we see in here, Shift M, which is the modeling settings, um, you can see the snapping settings. And the snapping settings says, hey, what do you want to snap to? Because we can snap to all kinds of things. There's everything. We can snap to other objects. We can snap to other edges. We can snap to other axes. We can snap sna axes. Axis. What's I don't, I don't know. Axi. Axi. I don't know. Something. And how does it snap? And where does it snap? In this example, we want to snap to the grid work plane. Okay. Do you want to snap to the grid points where the grid points are? You want to snap to the grid lines and where the lines are. So what do you want to snap to, grid points or grid lines? Well, we can turn on grid points and grid lines. And now, and there's a snap radius, let's say, let's say 10. 10 is a fine radius. And we'll say snap to there. And now we're snapping to that like so. Cool. Now we're snapping here into this, into the grids, work plane, into these grid points and lines. Excellent. Fantastic. Now when we go in here with the pen tool, as we get close to the edges, now we make sure we're snapping. We're snapping on the lines, we're snapping on the edges, we're snapping exactly to there. And now it's snapping exactly everything that we pull is snapping perfectly. Even the, even the bezier handles are snapping to the lines and the edges and we can make this more exact. So if you want that control, if you want that more exact amount of control, um, the ability to draw your splines and snap perfectly, that's inside of there. Again, Shift S, if you don't want that, you can turn that off. Um, so you have those controls there. Um, there's some more things you can do with splines, and there's some more ideas you can play with splines. Um, I really want to get into playing with splines in order to play with these controls of these generators. We'll talk about the other generators. We're kind of getting overwhelming on time here, so we can talk about the other generators and play with them later on. But that will get you started on some th basic things of using Extrude and Leith Lathe for now. So cool. I hope that was helpful. We'll get into some more stuff. Again, Simple4D may be a really complicated program and uh, really complex. Not complicated, but complex. It's really kind of, it makes sense most of the time, but um, it's really a complex program, and so there's a lot. And so there's a lot to cover, and I want to make sure that I dumb everything down and make, every, not dumb everything down, maybe just simplify. Simplify everything and make it understandable for you. So, you know, I hope this helps. All right, keep playing, keep modeling, keep drawing, keep creating things, and have some fun. Discover something new that I haven't discovered yet. Anyway. All right, that's going to be it for today.